Heavy showers across the Sun Coast this evening. Will the rain be gone for your morning commute? Plus breaking news tonight as we go on air. A high school in Manatee County has a new name. What commissioners decided after a long day of debate? Your Sun Coast News starts now. You're watching ABC 7 News at 11. Good evening. Let's get right to ABC 7's Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan, who's been putting together the most accurate forecast for us here on the Sun Coast. And Bob, you told us that rain was coming today. It certainly came down pretty fast and pretty nasty. Yeah, it was a pretty heavy rainfall. Nothing severe as we expected, but it did come down at the rate of two inches per hour, and that did cause some minor flooding problems in parts of the Sun Coast near Sarasota, northward along US 41 into uh, Manatee County as well. All the uh, heavy rainfall for the most part is over. We're still seeing some moderate showers off into the Gulf of Mexico. The actual trough of low pressure is continuing to move off to the east now, and we can still see some moderate rain occurring into Charlotte County, also near Arcadia. Uh, for the most part, the light rain continues on Siesta Key and a near parish, but out here are still some showers left to go to move on through. Uh, so the accumulation of rainfall up to an inch and a half to two inches in some areas. Here's the future cast and showing most of the rain should be over by 3 a.m. Uh, we're not going to see anything too heavy, too rough overnight. Uh, just some clouds hanging around and then to start your morning off. We'll look for partly cloudy skies. There will be some fog and then uh, increasing clouds as we move into the afternoon hours as a result of another system a little piece of energy moving across the Gulf of Mexico and bringing some inland storms mainly into the uh, afternoon. And then some of those could be uh, strong in terms of heavy rainfall and the actual showers moving through the west coast of Florida anywhere from say four to up to seven o'clock and then things will quiet down after that. We'll take a look at the extended forecast, let you know if we're in for some sunshine as we head closer to the weekend coming up in just a few minutes. Jacqueline. All right, Bob, thank you. Breaking news tonight on a story we've been following for you for months now. The high school being built in Parrish now has a new name. The Manatee County School Board listening to dozens of people during a public hearing tonight and deciding on the name Parrish Community High School. ABC 7's Rick Adams has more this evening from the Bradenton Area Convention Center. While many people did have their voices heard tonight, in the end, the Manatee County School Board went with the majority. One after another, the people of Parish and even some from surrounding communities voiced their concerns, urging the Manatee County School Board to have the name Parish somewhere in the name of the new high school. About six months ago, the school board voted to name the new high school North River High School, disappointing a lot of people. We've got 2,900 plus signatures saying we want Parish High School. But then again, we don't want to take away from Palmetto because they're asking the same thing that we're asking. So if it means adding something to Parish to make it a joint effort and bring the community together and focus that it's on the community, then we're okay. In the end, the school board voted four to one to name the school yeah. Parish Community High School. The only no vote was Charlie Kennedy. Like Kennedy, Scott hopes would have liked to have seen North River somewhere in the name along with Parish, but he still voted yes. I think they want to ensure that the, the legacy of, of the name of their community uh, is maintained given all the growth. There were some people who spoke in opposition to having Parish in the name because the community was established by Crawford Parish, a slave owner. It should stay North River High School. North River High School. Most of the people who packed into the Bradenton Area Convention Center are happy with the end result. It's going to be a matter of the camaraderie of coming together and remembering they went to Parish Community High School. So I think it's a, an amazing conclusion. And the doors to the new Parish Community High School will officially open this fall. Reporting from Palmetto, I'm Rick Adams, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Okay, Rick, thank you. We're following an ongoing investigation after a man was shot twice in Venice overnight. It happened at a windows and doors manufacturing company called PGT Industri Industries at about 1230 this morning. This video is of police actively searching for that suspect earlier this morning. We're told by police that someone living in this gated community across from the back lot of PGT saw someone suspicious in their complex. Police searched the area of Knights Trail Road, both with officers on the ground and in the chopper above, but did not find the suspect. The Venice police chief tells us the victim is in stable condition after suffering from gunshot wounds to his leg and hand while sitting in his car on his lunch break. According to the victim, the shooter walked right up to his car wearing a mask and all black clothing. When the victim rolled down the window, police say the suspect 
made some comments that led them to believe he may have known the victim, but the victim says he does not know who that suspect was. Obviously, it's a little shocking because you are, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, Venice is a type of community where we don't have these type of things occurring. So, um, but fortunately, when it does happen, we have a uh, team of people in place and the resources to uh, thoroughly investigate it. The only description of this suspect that we have right now is that he is a white male dressed in a dark hoodie. We'll continue to keep you updated on this story on air and online as new developments come into our newsroom. A follow up now on another breaking news story happening overnight, a playground literally up in flames. Let's take another look at that video sent in by an ABC 7 viewer now going viral on our social media page. Pioneer Park in Sarasota totally engulfed, now completely destroyed. We're now learning those damages could cost the city thousands of dollars to replace that playground. Well, our preliminary estimate just for the playground is over 100,000. And we're not sure about the grounds as far as the, there's a large tree there that we're keeping an eye on and going to evaluate that. Caution tape can still be seen around the entire playground. A surveillance video from the parking lot nearby will be reviewed to see if anyone was near that area at the time. Well, not a good week for playgrounds. Speaking of the city of Venice's Public Works Department removing two playground structures today at Venezia Park. The equipment is more than 20 years old and was rusty, corroded and potentially unsafe. They're budgeted to be replaced by next year, but that could happen much sooner. The funeral of Jabez Span, the Sarasota teen whose body was found last week in Manatee County, will take place this weekend. That funeral will be this Saturday at Trevine Missionary Baptist Church, Baptist Church, excuse me, in Sarasota. After going missing nearly a year and a half ago, Jabez's body was found last weekend in Manatee County. He was 14 years old when he disappeared on Labor Day, and the police are now treating this case as a death investigation. The Northport Police Department looking to add a new type of equipment to their gear. For the last 30 days, selected officers have been training on how to use these new body cameras, and they've evaluated how the high-definition video and audio footage they capture helps them. The department believes this will be a way to have full transparency with residents. These cameras would cost Northport close to a million dollars over the next five years. When it comes to our social media and our tools and our apps and things that we use to get the community involved, hopefully this is just uh, one more layer of that and an opportunity for people to have more transparency into their local police department. It would include equipment for each officer and the personnel needed to collect the daily video and audio recordings from these body cameras for public record. City commissioners will ultimately be making that decision of whether or not to invest in this equipment. An Inglewood man accused of riding a bike out of Walmart. Charlotte County Sheriff's investigators say he was caught on surveillance video taking the bike from a rack, walking out to the garden center and just riding it out the door. The loss prevention officer actually spotted the accused thief on his drive home about two hours after that bike was stolen. Deputies say he later admitted to making a quote stupid mistake. Well, oftentimes teens find themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time. Sarasota County Boys and Girls Club doing more to keep them from getting into trouble. The Boys and Girls Club of Sarasota County is expanding a program proven successful in the past known as the Club at Night or CAN. The late night teen program will now be available at two locations. It aims to keep middle and high school students busy when they're not in school. CAN offers year-round academic, social and career readiness opportunities. Now those teens can go to the Roy McBean location and the Lee Weatherington location from 6 to 10 every Friday during the school year and every Friday and Saturday during the summer. And tonight, the Manatee County Boys and Girls Club celebrating their members at the organization's annual Youth of the Year dinner. The three finalists gave speeches describing what it means to be a role model and a leader for kids in their communities. Senior Aries C. from the DeSoto Club took home tonight's award as the Manatee County Youth of the Year. She will now compete at the Florida Youth of the Year competition. All three finalists were able to take home scholarship money from this competition to help with their college education. Now, the Junior Youth of the Year award was actually tied between a young girl named Kaya and a young man named Lori. A big congrats to those winners, and we wish them the best moving forward.
Also happening in Manatee County, commissioners voting unanimously on their new administrator, Sherry Correa, making history as the first ever female administrator, getting two standing ovations from the packed room today. She'll be officially sworn in on Friday. She takes over Ed Hunziker's previous role. He served the county for about a dozen years after half a century in public service. Stay with us, Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan will be back with your first alert forecast. And another Tesla catches fire after a crash, this one in South Florida. What the company is saying after that fatal accident. And state lawmakers meeting at Moat Marine Lab today, the discussion that they had on Red Tide. Thanks to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, what was once impossible is happening today for thousands of patients with blood cancer. I live. I live. I live. I live. I live. She lives. Because of the research done by the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society in the battle against blood cancer. If you had a chance to support the research that is saving lives, what would you do? Attention Medicare beneficiaries. The Center for Medicare Services has officially authorized new benefits Medicare Advantage plans may include. Plans may now include private home aids and rides to medical appointments. Most plans also include dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage. To get the benefits you deserve, call the Medicare Coverage Helpline now. Hi, I'm Joe Namath. I called the Medicare Coverage Helpline and they instantly advised me that I wasn't getting all the benefits I deserve. They explained I could get a plan that includes dental and prescription coverage, as well as the new coverage for private home aids and rides to medical appointments. If you want to find out what you deserve, call the number on your screen now. It's free. You'll be happy you called. I guarantee it. Call to see if you can save money and get more benefits now. Don't delay. Call now. It's free. Call 1-800-711-7200. That's 1-800-711-7200 now. Hi, I'm Chef Allen, and watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday morning on ABC7, where we'll be serving up our most awesome dishes. Then stop by your neighborhood Publix to sample, pick up the recipe card, and all the ingredients. Listen up, America. Are you or a loved one suffering with an addiction to alcohol, opiates, prescription painkillers, or other drugs? There is hope. Medication-assisted treatment is proven most effective for opiate addiction recovery. Utilizing medications such as methadone, suboxone, and subutex combined with inpatient treatment, you can achieve lasting recovery. Most insurance is accepted, so call us now. Please call 800-640-5014. Love is in the air. The love of performance, the love of thrills, and the love of low payments. Only at BMW of Sarasota. Drive the 2019 X3, only $439 a month. Or drive a new X1, just $329 a month. Fall in love with your next car at BMW of Sarasota. Hurry, these offers end soon. Experience the difference online at BMWofSarasota.com. Hey there, I'm P. Allen Smith. Join me Saturdays and Sundays on ABC7. California has been dealing with cold temperatures and heavy rain, but these crazy weather conditions there brought on an early bloom to their state flower, the poppies. As far as the eye can see near Lake Elsinore, if you find yourself in that part of the country this year, city officials want to remind visitors to enjoy the sites, but with care. This year, the city launched its Preserve While You Observe campaign. They're encouraging people to stay off of the flowers and on the path. And officials in Arkansas are keeping a close eye on the rising Mississippi River as floodwaters continue to rise there. Take a look at these spectacular shots from above showing just how high that water really is. The river expected to crest around 41 feet sometime next week, which is 7 feet above flood stage. And after being stranded on the tracks for a day and a half, an Amtrak train finally pulled into Oregon this morning. The train was carrying almost 200 passengers from Seattle to Los Angeles when it got stuck on Sunday evening. 
It hit a tree that had fallen on the tracks. And Amtrak says it kept passengers on that train because the power was out and roads were blocked in Oak Ridge due to heavy snow. Amtrak said it will give the passengers refunds. <laughs> I'm trying to think there's this movie where that where the train gets stuck on it and I can't even think of what it's called, Bob, but otherwise. I don't know, it's called Nightmare. <laughs> really, 40 know, hours on a, plane, on a, on a, on a uh, train like that. Just I, mean, I don't even know what you do. Yeah, I don't know. You got a deck of cards or something, <laughs> you play you that or something. But uh, we had a little bit of rainfall today, just came right after the eighth inning. And mm -hmm. so uh, things worked out for the most part for the Orioles game today. Uh, we are looking at a couple of different scenarios being played out right now. We still have rain to go through with this system. Uh, there's trough of low pressure and old frontal boundary kind of hanging around still out there right now. That's a review of the radar, or I should say uh, satellite and uh, low clouds and a foggy start tomorrow. That's what we're going to see Wednesday. And then uh, some scattered storms late, not from this uh, trough, but uh, from uh, the system here. This is the next weather system now moving through Louisiana. This one will be over in the next couple of hours. We're still going to get warm though. Upper 70s. We had highs today at 79 degrees despite the clouds and despite the rain. Well, the Titan radar picture showing the action still very uh, in full force now down in South Florida. That's where the heavy rough weather is now in Fort Myers and spreading toward Naples. This is the uh, system we're watching right now and this will continue to move off to the east, it's basically moving west to the east, but it, there's a slight drop to the south, so we are going to see this move on through. It's not a cold front, but it is a, another mid to upper level low pressure system like we saw with this one. Very difficult to predict with the models. The models, in fact, earlier this afternoon didn't have any rainfall around here, and now they're starting to pick up on it, but uh, still some showers to go through. This line of low pressure will move through. As I mentioned, most of the rain will be over around 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, it looks like, but uh, still moderate rainfall occurring in the uh, uh, Charlotte Harbor area also near Placida and Rotunda stretching up to Northport. It's lessening there somewhat. Just some light rain lingering along Siesta Key up and toward Anna Maria Island. This will continue to push off to the southeast. Don't worry about it. It's nothing to be severe, uh, nothing to be worried about, nothing uh, severe coming with this and uh, just some moderate rainfall expected overnight. Boy, a lot of rain in just a short period of time too. Uh, caused some flooding along US 41 today. Uh, these are some rainfall totals. A closer look revealing that Two inches fell near Lido, estimated anyway, in downtown Sarasota, over an inch. Lakewood Ranch got up to almost two inches of rainfall there. Two inches near Cortez and near Palmasola. And then down south, 1.7, just uh, south of Northport. Well, here's the future cast. So showing this rain moving out again, I, I concur with that. And then by tomorrow morning, wake up, we'll have partly cloudy skies. And then increasing clouds and a chance for showers, mainly inland in the afternoon. And then the line of showers will move through our area, looks like, sometime after 4 p.m. Uh, and then eventually weaken as it pushed to the southeast uh, and we'll see uh, clearing skies for Thursday. Yes, there could be a couple of thunderstorms, nothing severe. Uh, we're looking at just thunderstorms scattered about uh, that chance of a thunderstorm activity will be in the afternoon, late afternoon and evening. Rainfall uh, forecast as far as totals go, uh, not much in expected, but we have to keep an eye on this because uh, today it was not predicting much at all and we got over two inches of rain. So. It just shows you that the atmosphere is a little bit more juiced up in the mid levels of the atmosphere. Now the GFS forecast model again showing that rain moving out and then clear skies moving in on Thursday. Now Friday a weak front comes down, kind of weakens right over the top of us, uh, but should not really upset our weather all that much as we move through time. Currently uh, the uh, pollen count, the good thing on that is it's gone down because of the rain, but we are looking for higher amounts to come back on Thursday and Friday back into the high category to even very high on Friday. Scattered showers for boaters tomorrow. South winds at 10 knots turn to the uh, 5 knots in the afternoon. There'll be a light chop in the bays and inland waters. Seas will be running 1 to 2 feet. The extended forecast then calling for one more day of some showers and storms, mainly in the afternoon and evening. And then things look really good through the weekend. Temperatures warming too, above average, right around 80 degrees. And it looks like February will end up as the second warmest uh, month of February uh, that we've seen in here over 100 years. Wow. Okay, thank you, Bob. Happening in Florida, a fiery crash involving a Tesla turns deadly. Now the company is responding. Reporter Sanella Sabovich shows us the scene of the crash in South Florida. This is what's left of a Tesla involved in a fatal fiery wreck, incinerated and unrecognizable. The car is outside of a superior towing because it keeps reigniting. Davy Fire Rescue crews responding several times since it was brought here. They had a problem where the car keeps catching fire because the battery pack itself hasn't drained yet. So we've been out here three times already. Oh my God. 
It was a dramatic scene Sunday afternoon. The Tesla engulfed in flames after the driver, Omar Awan, somehow lost control, skidding through three lanes of traffic before slamming into palm trees along the 1200 block of Flamingo Road. It was just a massive ball of fire. Witnesses told police they saw the car speeding, going at least 75 to 90 miles an hour. Onlookers watched on in horror as firefighters tried to battle the flames. There was just no way anybody could have saved whoever was in there. Family members arriving to the scene visibly distraught, telling officers their loved one's cell phone pinned them to this crash site. This comes after a similar high-speed crash involving a Tesla back in May of last year. 18-year-old Barrett Riley lost control of his Tesla S sedan and crashed into a wall on Seabreeze Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale. He and his passenger, Edgar Montserrat, were trapped inside as the car was engulfed in flames. Both died in that wreck, and Montserrat's family has filed a lawsuit against Tesla. That was Sinella Sabovich reporting. In an official statement about that crash, Tesla says the company will cooperate with investigators. It was a sad weekend for Zoo Miami. Workers there said goodbye to a 51-year-old elephant who died on Friday. Officials say Sita died after having a confrontation with another African elephant named Peggy. While such confrontations to determine and enforce hierarchy are not a uncommon among elephants, Sita was unable to get up after she was knocked down. She originally arrived in Miami from the zoo in Virginia in 2016. Also happening in Florida, prizes for pythons. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission gearing up for another year of python hunting. The python pickup program is an incentive program to give away prizes that will be raffled off each month. Hunters will need to submit proof of a python and a location. FWC says pythons can be killed on any property throughout the state of Florida as long as the person who owns that land approves it. With a commitment to addressing the impacts of climate change, the state's cabinet has decided to renew the contract of a top environmental official. Noah Valenstein was approved today by the cabinet after recommendations by Governor Ron DeSantis and former Governor Rick Scott. He says his, he recognizes the state has faced many issues in the past few years, like toxic algae blooms. It is abundantly clear how important our environment is to the foundation of Florida's economy and way of life here. Agriculture Commissioner Nikki Freed, the lone Democrat on that cabinet, says she's encouraged by his commitment to work on water quality issues within her department. Meanwhile, state legislative leaders across the area gathering at Moat Marine Lab today to talk about red tide and the critical role of marine science and technology in addressing it. The toxic algae bloom killed tons of sea life and cost local business businesses millions of dollars over the past year. Today's meeting included state lawmakers, state environmental officials, Moat Marine scientists and FWC leaders. Moat's president and CEO Dr. Michael Crosby gave a presentation and also took advantage of the opportunity to ask the visiting lawmakers for additional red tide funding for Moat Marine research. I think there's some uh, possible increases that one might uh, look at as a wise investment and a good return on investment of appropriated funds to fight red tide. Um, Crosby called for the legislature to allocate $3 million for a new five-year red tide mitigation and technology development initiative. He says it will bring together the best scientists from Florida and around the world to help prevent and control red tide impacts. The next le legislative session starts a week from today in Tallahassee. So how much is the tooth fairy dishing out? Sorry kids, you may not like this news. We'll have more on that story coming up next. What's happening on Kimmel tonight? Nothing short of a comedy delight. So get ready for the fired up Chloe Grace Moretz. I'm you know? super into it. Plus owner of the Los Angeles Clippers, Steve Palmer. We don't give up. And music from Lauren Daigle. Jimmy Kimmel Live, new tonight on ABC. Mesothelioma, it's all we do. With nine offices across the country, we are large enough to take on big corporations. There is no risk. Let us come meet with you. We only take mesothelioma claims. Call us at 1-800-485-6000 or go to mesobook.com. Our experience and the size of our law firm makes a difference. Call us at 1-800-485-6000 or visit mesobook.com. 
Have you written a book and want it published? Page Publishing cuts through the confusion of copyright protection, barcodes, and digital rights. We print and digitize your book and place your book for sale online and in bookstores everywhere. Most publishers won't even look at new author submissions. We're different. If we decide to publish your book, your work ends and ours begins. From editing to cover design, we get you published. Call now for your free author submission kit at 877-461-5033. Meet Blue. Blue's not feeling well. The prescription? Generic medication. Blue wonders, do they really work as well as name brands? Yes, generics and name brand medications do work the same. Even though they may look different, generics have the same key ingredients. FDA approval is equally rigorous for generics to make sure they're as safe and effective as name brands. And Blue even saves some green, making him a little less, well, blue. Talk to your doctor about generics and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. Our nation's servicemen and women show great courage and leadership both on and off the battlefield. When they transition to civilian life, they can apply the skills and values they learned in the military to the workplace. That's why the Coalition to Salute America's Heroes is urging employers everywhere to be smart, bet on a vet. Hiring a veteran is also a great way to show your appreciation for them. To learn more, call 1-888-44-SALUTE. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. I will always place the mission first. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. I will never accept defeat. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. I will never quit. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. I will never leave a fallen comrade. Learn more at nationalguard.com. she has. Buddy up. I'm Jill Harrington. Please visit HelpSaveTheNextGirl.com and get involved. In consumer news, apparently the tooth fairy is pinching pennies. The cost for a low or a lost tooth is down 43 cents according to the yearly survey from Delta Dental. Researchers say the average payout for a tooth is $3.70 while a first lost tooth is worth about five bucks. Now, for some reason, geography seems to play a factor for tooth worth. Children in the West average more than anywhere else in the country, making $4.13 per tooth. Meanwhile, teeth in the Midwest earn the least only about three bucks. Well, that tax refund you're waiting on could be smaller than in years past. The IRS says the average tax refund is down nearly 17% from last year. Previous data shows it dipped an average of 8%. That refund size casts unfavorable light on President Trump's tax cuts. However, the Tax Policy Center, a nonpartisan think tank, says the majority of Americans received a cut, even if their refunds have shrunk. And Google is looking for a little love from the tax man, the search engine giant seeking to build a $600 million wind-powered data center in central Minnesota. Executives are asking officials to waive future taxes for 20 years. That project would bring an estimated 50 full-time tech jobs to that area. Well, stay with us. What a drag. Find out why this pug just doesn't want to go where his owner's taking him. Plus, a look at your winning lotto numbers when we come back. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was and some additional cancers that were not found during the biopsy. I would recommend the Detoli Cancer Center. As a group of human beings, they are unbelievably great.
skills you develop as a soldier in the Army National Guard can give you a head start on your career. Gain practical experience with technology and equipment that will give you a leg up in the civilian world. Learn critical leadership skills and to be part of a team. Serve your community and your country part-time while earning money for an education. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn about the paid training and career opportunities available to you in the Army National Guard. There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but one of the teachers was Miss Araceli. She gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing and she'll sit there with you until you get it. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Winning numbers are sponsored by Frontier Fios. Well, here's a pug we can all relate to, especially here in Florida. The owner of this pup in Australia says he just didn't want to leave the air conditioned store to venture back out into Australia's summer heat. No, He's just not having it. No. Don't make me go out there. I feel you. <laughs> I think she may be feeling the uh, the owner's uh, pain probably I at know. the same time. You know, I mean, I, I know. Like it, pulling them, dragging that's them. That's right, right. <laughs> uh, we are looking at uh, some uh, nice weather tomorrow morning, but things change in the afternoon and evening. All right. Thanks so much, Bob. And thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Have a good one.